All right. Hi, Golden Angel. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so I got to ask you, Golden Angel, and when I first looked at that, uh, I thought you were like an entire publishing company. So, entire publishing company, uh, one with one employee. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I do. Uh, I have two books with Cleese Press, including the one um, that I'm promoting right now, The Duke's Pursuit. But 90 percent, 95 percent of what I write, I do self-publishing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do it all. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Most of my <laughs> well, I guess what I meant was when I saw Golden Angel, I thought it was Golden Angel Publishing, but it's actually that's your author name, right? Yeah, it, and it is. It's a little bit unusual. Um, I actually did not intend to become an author when I first started publishing books. Uh, I started publishing back in 2012, so I'm celebrating my 10th year this year. And the reason I started publishing books was I had been writing for a free website for about seven or eight years at that point. And some of my readers on that website wanted me to, th th there, was a, there was a serial of, that they really liked that was very long. And they said, we want to be able to own this, um, you know, in case the site ever gets taken down or anything like that. Um, can, you, can you put this up? Self-publishing was just, you know, becoming a thing and said, can you put this up? And so that, that way I can buy it and own it. And I went, well, let me see how difficult this is. And I looked into it. And it turns out that just putting your book up is the really easy part. Um, so I went ahead and I put it up for sale. And to make it very easy for them to find me, um, and at the time thinking, oh, this is just, I'm doing this for the people who asked for it. It's not like other people are going to be interested in reading this stuff. Um, and so I put it up uh with my username from the website, which was Golden Angel. <laughs> and yeah, did not, did not really, ex and then I kept writing for the website and I kept writing, I, kept, I started writing more books because people were paying for them and that was nice. And uh, eventually it, it just kind of snowballed and now it is my full-time job and career and I have a very unusual pen name, but I, you know, it, it helps me stand out, I think. It's not, it's a easy, you know, two easy words that people know. And so it's not something that you really have to work hard to remember. And I think that helps me out, too. Well, what's the story behind Golden Angel? Where did that come from? Um, so I have very light colored hazel eyes and I had a lot of comments um, around the time I was in college when I first started writing for the website. And I had a lot of comments around that time for some reason for my friends who were commenting on how in the sunlight my eyes look like they're golden um and so my original choice was for my username was golden eyes but that was taken uh <laughs> and i've always had a really fa i've had a big fascination with angels ever since i was a little kid um and i have a small collection of angel christmas ornaments and i was just looking for something that i could use on the website and it just kind of happened okay well that's a good name and yeah uh, yeah, you're right. Well, Golden Eye is taken. That's a James Bond movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Golden I Eyes. Mean, most, most people on the website are, you know, they're using all sorts of interesting and fun usernames, um, none of which sound like actual names. So I was trying to fit in there, and it just so happened that it it's a standout name once you move over to books <laughs> and publishing. So how many books have you written to date? So under Golden Angel, I think I've written about 60. I have another pen name um, that is a lot darker, uh, kind of more focused on very niche <laughs> genres within erotica and erotic romance. And that one has about 10 books. Um, it's not one that I do a lot with. Did you say 6D, 6-0? 6-0. Wow. Um, yeah, it, I, mean, I, I write fast uh, and I've been doing it since 2012. Um, and I have a few kind of main worlds that I write in, which all have multiple series. And then I have a few standalones that I've written. And a few of the, a few of the stories that are up are novellas instead of um, full length books. But I still count them. <laughs> so. Well, OK, so it's probably around 50. OK, well, how long did it take you to do that? 
So it takes me, for one of my full-length books, it takes me anywhere from two to three months to write one. Um, so, and also in 2012, when I, you know, when I first started publishing, uh, I had a lot of content on the website um, that I was able to turn into books and kind of move over. And so my first 10 or so books were started on the website and then moved over. Um, but yeah, after that, I just, I, I love it. Um, I always have. And so once I realized that people wanted to read what I was writing and were willing to pay for it, and, you know, at that time I was just out of college, I had a lot of debt, <laughs> um, and it made a massive difference to my life. So I, I just kept writing. Uh, and a, a big thing for me was also just that the, the emails and messages that I would get from readers um, who wanted to thank me for writing about the topics that I was writing about, um, because romance as a genre can feel very, very personal to people. Um, and especially I do a lot in a lot of my themes and my books have to do with communication and the importance of communication. And I've, I've actually had readers tell me that they feel like they learned better ways to communicate with their partner about their needs and desires um, from some of the conversations that happen between the characters in my books. And like when you get a message from someone like that and realize that the things you're doing actually can impact someone's life in a positive way, um, I mean, that really was massively inspiring to me. Um, and so even though I've, I've made it a career and it's a business, I think deep down that's what really drove me in the beginning and continues to drive me. Like, I don't think I could ever write a book that didn't speak to me in, in, in the same way that my books did when I first started writing. Well, any kind of creative endeavor, there has to be a passion to drive it. Business is business and, and it, when you deal with self-publishing, you're sort of wearing two hats. You're wearing oh, yeah. the business side of it, which is basically turns your book into a commodity, like a can of soup. But, mm -hmm. but when you're the creator, when you're writing the stories, you've got to be passionate about what you're doing. Otherwise, your work really won't be any good, <laughs> I think. Right. Yeah, it really is a matter of, okay, let me take these ingredients that I love, put them together, make the best soup that I can, and then figure out how to make people, you know, how to how to tell people, like, this is the soup that you want. <laughs> these have the ingredients that you like. Um, yeah, it very much is so. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot about writing what I want to write and then figuring out how to package and market it uh, so that people know that it's what they want to read. Well, I'm happy you can do that because not all artists, and I'll use that term generally for writers or musicians or whatever, don't have the skills to do the business side. They're great at the creative side. It's hard and there was there was a lot of learning involved. Um, I, I, especially when I became a full-time author, I, I think in some ways I'm a huge reader. And I, I love to read and I'm a speed reader, so I, I would just binge. I could read so fast. Um, you know, before I was writing, I could read anywhere from 10 to 20 books in a week, um, depending on how long they were. And so I, I feel like I kind of assimilated a lot of my knowledge about craft and plot structure and tropes and all the things that like when you when you step back and you look at it from the business side you're like okay these are the things you need and for me instead of learning it that way i, I kind of learned it by immersing myself in reading so many books um and then and and now and, and so really the only thing that i had to learn to do was to label those things because they were all there. They were in my books. I'm, I'm a very instinctive writer. I do use an outline. My characters don't always follow it. Um, but, you know, I if I think too hard about like beats or craft or anything, you know, or, or trope or anything like that while I'm writing, it, it completely messes me up. Um, but when I go back and I look at it, I go, oh, yeah, no, I hit all the beats, but I do it instinctively because that's what I learned just from, from reading books instead of reading about writing. Um, 
but I, th I think you can really do it. I think you can learn to do it either way. Um, I do prefer the way I did it <laughs> for me. That was, I, cause thinking about it too analytically completely messes me up. Well, I agree. Uh, we've got just about two minutes left. So I just want to hit on your new latest book, uh, The Duke's Pursuit. Is this the title of the book or is it the book series? That is the title of the book. Um, I wrote it, it's with Cleese Press, uh, who are absolutely wonderful to work with. And it is a historical romance. Um, it's different from most historical romances. One of the things that, um, because I read so much, what happens is I will see a lot of tropes played out in a certain way. And while I love the the kind of usual way that it plays out, if I see it happening over and over and over again, I, I get this burning desire to take it and flip it on its head, um, which is what I did with this one. I've had a few people comment that, you know, it, it's very much taking the um, second chance historical romance trope and, and flipping it so that the heroine really gets to be in charge of her own destiny um, instead of having the hero return from wherever he was and sweep her off her feet. And um, I really wanted to write one where the heroine gets to go through the kind of explorations that the hero usually does um, in historical romances. And it all plays out on the page. And uh, it is what we would call on very, very spicy romance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a, it's an interesting dive into kind of the going against the trope of the woman who has to stay chaste and pure in order for, um, the hero to be attracted to her. Um, and that was something that I really wanted to play with, with this book. So. Well, that's an interesting twist because yeah, she usually is the, the fair maiden. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so no, I guess in a, in a little bit, it's like, I, I think someone did actually say in a review where they're like, it's kind of like a, it's like a feminist historical romance, which wasn't what was in my head when I was writing it. But like when I went back, when I like think about it, I'm like, okay, yeah, because it really, it is, it's one of the more female centered books that I've written. Um, whereas normally I kind of try to balance it a little bit between the hero and the heroine with this one. It really is focused on her desires and her needs and uh and he you know and and him kind of coming to the realization that they are just as important as his needs and his desires so yeah it was a fun book to write well we do have to wind this down unfortunately we are out of time do you have a website that you want to give out i do uh you can find me at www.goldenangelromance.com okay great and where do they get all the people for the covers? Uh, so this one, I believe, was actually from periodimages.com, which most of my historical cover images come from. They have a great selection of Regency, Victorian, Georgian, Colonial. They have some contemporary, too, but really that's, I think they're kind of more known for um, the historical ones. Oh, so these are just models that you can pick out of a catalog, basically? To yeah, use. Basically. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, Golden Angel. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and best of luck with your books. I hope they do thank well. You.